This is a video lesson from Module 3, Lesson 9. The Lesson 9 learning target is I can multiply three and four digit numbers by one digit numbers applying the standard algorithm. So today we're going to be talking about the standard algorithm, which is probably one of the most popular ways that people uh, multiply multi-digit numbers, and we're going to be connecting the standard algorithm to two of our strategies we've been using the last few lessons, the place value chart and place value disks method and partial products. So let's go ahead and jump into the first problem here. In this problem, I'm going to be multiplying 3 times 164, and I'm going to be comparing the place value disks method to the standard algorithm. I'm going to be going one step at a time and kind of showing how each step works in the different processes, or in the different strategies, I should say. So starting with the uh, place value chart here with the first step, I'm going to be looking at my ones, tens, and hundreds place and representing those in disks on the place value chart. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to use colored disks this time just to show what's actually happening when I am doing the multiplication each step. Okay. So on the place value disks, I am going to make three copies of the four ones. And you see that I get 12 ones here. So I need to regroup 10 of those ones into one ten. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Here are 10 of the ones, and that's going to become one ten. Now, this, what this process looks like in the standard algorithm is pretty similar. Uh, I'm going to be multiplying 3 times the 4 ones right up here. And I'm going to get the same answer, 3 times 4 ones is 12. I'm going to put the 2 from the 12, uh, in the 2 in the ones place and the 12 down below. But what's different about the standard algorithm is the regrouped 110, so this 10 right here, I'm actually going to put above the tens place in my second factor. And we'll see what happens with that next. So the next thing I'm going to do on the place value chart is I'm going to multiply 3 times the 6 tens. So I'm going to make 3 copies of 6 tens. And I'm going to count how many tens I have in total. So the 3 groups of 6 tens is 18, plus the 110 I have right here that I regrouped previously, that's 19 tens. So I'm going to try to regroup all these tens up here. Uh, and see how many I have left. So I have, let's see, I'm going to try to, I think I have enough for 10 tens to make 100, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I was able to regroup these into 100, and I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tens left. So I had 19 tens in total, but I was left after regrouping with nine tens, which I'll represent on the standard algorithm with blue here. I had nine tens, and then I regrouped ten of those tens into 100, which I'll put above the hundreds place. So in the standard algorithm, I essentially just multiplied three times six, which was 18, and then I added this one in, kind of like I added the one in over here. So now the last step, I'm going to make three copies of my 100. And I have one, two, three hundreds plus this 100 right here, which gives me four hundreds. So I'm left with four hundreds, nine tens, and two ones. And the same thing on the standard algorithm. I'm going to multiply the three here by my 100. And three times 100 is 300. And then I'm going to add in this 100 that I regrouped. So that's going to be four hundreds total. So you see I'm able to get the same answer here, 492, using both the place value chart and the place value disks and the standard algorithm. So the connection is a little bit more clear between the strategies when we look at the partial product strategy versus the standard algorithm. So I'm going to be solving the same problem, a three-digit number by a one-digit number, first using the partial product strategy and then using the standard algorithm. And let's see if we can see the connection between the two. So once again, I'm going to use different colors to represent the different place values that I'm multiplying. And so when the partial product strategy, I'm going to be multiplying 5 by 7 ones, 5 by 3 tens, and then 5 by 2 hundreds. So 5 times 7 ones is going to be 35. 5 times 3 tens is going to be 150. And then 5 times 2 hundreds is going to be 1,000. 
So I recorded all the partial products down below. Now I'm going to add. And I get my answer of 1,185. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this problem will look like when we are solving it with the standard algorithm. I'm going to be doing the same thing, but it's just the way I write the answers is going to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So 5 times 7 ones is going to be 35, but this time I'm going to represent the 5 from the 35, so that's this 5 right here, down below, and I'm going to regroup the 3 tens from the 30. I'm going to put that 3 up above the 3 in the tens place of my original factor. So this 3 right up here is the same as this 3 right here on uh, the partial product method. So now that I've done that step, I'm going to multiply once again 5 times 3 tens, well, 5 times 3 tens is going to be 15 tens, or 150. And then I'm going to add in my 3 tens that I had from the uh, regrouping from the 35. So 15 tens plus 3 tens is 18 tens. So I'm going to put the 8, 8 from 18 tens in the tens place. So the 8 goes right here. And I'm going to regroup the 1, uh, sorry, the 10 tens into 100. So essentially what I did is I multiplied 5 times 3, which was 15, added 3, which was 18, and I put the 8 from the 18 in the tens place, and I regrouped the 1 over here. This 8 right here is actually the same as this 8 in our final answer down here because we were able to add a 5 and a 3, just like we did over here. The final step is I'm going to multiply 5 times 2 hundreds. I'm essentially just multiplying 5 times 2, and then I'm going to add in this 1 that's up above, so that would give me 11 total. So I'll record 11 in the next two available place values here, so that 1's going to go in the hundreds place, and then 1 in the thousands place. So I get my final answer here of 1,185, which you see matches exactly with the final answer of my partial product method. So the main difference here is that in the partial product method, we're finding all of our partial products first, and then after we do that, we're adding. With a standard algorithm, we're essentially doing the same thing, except for when we're regrouping the uh, tens up above, we're essentially adding the uh, numbers that we did down below. We're adding them up, but we're doing it uh, as we go rather than all at one time at the end. So it's a very similar method, it's just the way that we are storing the, uh, the values in the problem is a little bit different. So let's go ahead and do one more example here, looking at the standard algorithm, and this time really focusing in on the steps that we're, uh, we're doing when we're solving the problem. So the first step here is we are going to multiply the ones by ones. So we have a ones place here. And we're going to multiply by that by the ones in the number above. So 4 times 7 is going to be 28. So we record the ones place and regroup the tens. So since 4 times 7 is 28, I'm going to record the ones place, regroup the tens over to the next place value. After this, I'm going to multiply the ones place by the tens place. So I have 4 times 5, which is 20. And then I need to add in regrouped numbers. So I have 4 times the 5 tens plus 2 is going to be 22 tens. So I'm going to record the ones place and then regroup tens. So I have 22 tens, so I'm going to keep the 2 down here, regroup the 2 up above. So the last step is I'm going to multiply ones place, my 4, times the hundreds place. So 4 times 4 is 16. And then I'm going to add in regrouped numbers. So 4 times 4 hundreds is 16 hundreds, plus the 2 hundreds up above is going to be 18 hundreds, and I'm just going to record that
record the product down below. And after I've done that, I've gotten my final answer. So that just about does it for our introduction here into the standard algorithm. Uh, so hopefully now you can see the connection between the standard algorithm and the place value method, as well as the standard algorithm and the partial products method. And you should feel pretty comfortable trying out the standard algorithm uh, with three digit by one digit multiplication problems. As always, if you get stuck or need a refresher, feel free to come back and rewatch any part of the video to give yourself a little bit of extra help. So good luck with the problem set, and thanks for watching.